Hi there and welcome back to Aid's Workshop. As the title suggests, today we're going to be making a set of darts. Now, these darts are made of tungsten and I have one dart to copy. Ignore the little uh, gold coloured plating on it, that's just a, a finish. But they are actually, from what I can work out, about 80% tungsten alloy. So as a bit of backstory, um, talking to a mate of mine in the pub, who's a very good dart player, but don't tell him I told you so. Many years ago, he was playing in, I think it was the Welsh Open, got knocked out at some stage or other, and had his darts in his top pocket. Of course, much drinking ensued, and a bit of dancing around on the dance floor that evening, I think it was up in Press Statin. And at some stage, two of the darts had jumped out of his top pocket, but a uh, little bit of alcohol in involved, and he didn't realise that he'd lost them. Anyway, he wakes up the following morning, raises me darts, I've only got one left. Now, of course, one dart is no good to anybody. So, asked the question, searched around where he was, and, you know, they'd gone. They'd gone. So, anyway, that was the end of those. The particular darts he had were no longer available. Um, so, we basically rooted around, found another set. But he really liked these darts. But uh, he'd found another set that was similar. But they're never the same. They're never the same. So, my plan is... Because I have one to copy, to replicate everything about them, with the uh, exception of the uh, sort of goldy coloured coating on them, because that's only just for show anyway, and to make him a set of darts. So I sort of had a look around on the internet to see if I could find a 80% tungsten bar, and it is available, but it isn't cheap, and it's not that easily available, and I think you had to buy like 100mm lengths or 300mm uh, lengths, that sort of thing. So what I did was went out and bought a set of Honking great 40 gram darts and these things crushed their hell of a weight. I couldn't throw with them I'm down on like 16 17 grams, but they are the 80% tungsten material I need and Let me just show you an example. We'll bring you in and give you a close-up on this So as you can see there's the sample and there's the ones I bought the 40 grammers. They are eight and a half mil diameter I believe I haven't measured them up yet, but they're visibly larger than the largest diameter of the sample Obviously, they're way longer and what have you so I need to profile all of the outside the length everything else to Exactly replicate the sample dart that I've got One good thing about using darts rather than raw material is that the points and the point bores uh, It's already done for me To a degree the 2BA thread in the back is already done for me Although I'm gonna to have to deepen it right down to the correct depth exactly the same as the original to keep the weight of the new darts when they're machined down exactly the same so I think we'll get on and formulate a plan and see what we can do but the good thing is after about 15 minutes rooting round in the hundred boxes of tools that I've got lying around here I did find a set of Presto 2BA taps uh, a full set so at least I know I can sort the thread out no problem as you can see I've decided to put my uh, ER32 MT3 collet chuck up in the headstock, draw bar from the back. I've got the dart held by its point. It was a 2.25 I measured the point up at. Uh, so I got a 2 to 3 millimeter collet and it holds in there nicely. And I got a center up the back end of it to hold it dead true. And as you can see, I can tell at a glance it's running perfectly, absolutely spot on. So I've had a little measure and the largest diameter of the existing dart across the knurl here, there is a little knurl, it's measuring about 8.1 millimetres, so I'm going to use that as a base point. Now, this tungsten is a tough old material, and I doubt I'm going to get very much increase in diameter when I knurl it. It's more going to be uh, impressed in rather than raised up. It'll be about 50-50. So I'm going to start with 8.1 diameter. Now, I've measured up the existing barrel on this dart, and it's measuring up at... <laughs> on its largest point here somewhere I believe it was 8.8 .8. yeah 8.8 .8. so I'm gonna skim down the barrel of the dart down to the major diameter that I'm going to be knurling which is 8.1 and I think while it's at this stage is when we're going to do the knurl so we'll do the knurl before we machine the rest of the dart down because I want as much meat in the dart as I can possibly get when I'm knurling it so We'll get in here somewhere. 
try running it at around 600. That just touched there. Bit of a heavy touch, we'll try that again. There we are, a little bit of an intermittent touch on there. Set a zero on the diameter. I think we'll take we'll take point one off it, see what happens. Just see how the feeds and speeds go. It's a long time since I machine any tungsten, so I don't really know what results I'm gonna get. That's running at 825. Yeah, seems to machine quite nicely, lovely finish. Put a bit of intermittent going on the front just slightly. I think that could be uh, inaccuracy in the uh, existing dart. So I'll now trude it up, I'll just have another quick measure. I don't know if there was any taper in this or what. Okay, so that's measuring up at 8.75. So I'm going to take point 0.1 aside, I think. We'll take another little skim across the top. Obviously there's a series of grooves in the original dart there. And the intermittent cut is as it passes over those grooves. Okay. Yeah, a little bit of intermittent at the front there. Not to worry. 8.55. Take another point one aside, I think. Oop, too much. There we go. Same again. I'll bring you back when we're doing the finishing cut. Okay, so I've got a finishing cut, just like a flower side, just to bring it down. And I'm gonna aim for 8.05 to 8.1. I'll just sped it up, we're doing a 1050. Put a zero on my DRO. I'll just wind that off. We'll have a measure. I don't know whether you can pick that up. See if I can give you a zoom in on that. Yeah, well, I can't see whether I can focus on that on it. Um, Eight point zero five is my diameter there. And I've just double checked myself. Yeah, that's measuring 8.09, something like that. So when I put a null on it, that diameter is going to increase ever so slightly. So I think my next procedure is going to be to take all three of the darts to that diameter. So I've just had a look at this, and in the current setup, because I've got such a hurtling great knurling tool I think I will have to make myself one of those scissor ones you know I can't get to the front knurl on the barrel so I'm gonna have to change the setup so I think I'm gonna hold it by the diameter back here somewhere and knurl the part that's sticking out with the chuck and at least that way I'm not putting so much pressure on that point either so what I will do is machine the OD on all three of them and then we'll do another setup completely for the knurl So we're on the third one now, finishing cut. And we've taken all the diameters identical, 8.05, something like that. Now you can see the remnants of the original grooves. I'm not worried about those, because a lot of that's going to be machined away for the profile of the dart. And the ones that are in the area of the dart actually line up with the existing grooves on the existing dart. So it looks like I bought the correct ones. Anyway, 
So that's the third one done. Now we need to do the knurling. Drill it out. Yeah, maybe two and a half mil. So I've got two point three. I'll mark it up when I have a look. I didn't tell you what this was for. I lost a bit of footage, so I'll retell you. <laughs> I made up a piece of half inch diameter brass. You saw it in the collet, faced one end, center drilled it, drilled it right through, tooth out clear. It was ended up being 2.4 millimeter drilled hole to clear the point and centered the other end. It was running lovely and true. Um, it was done in the collet. In a, I've got a 12 to 13 collet, so a 12.7 or half inch fits in there lovely. I've got a nice big taper in there, which picks up on the ball end at the front here the point goes inside and the center will go this end to locate the dart and it just gives it a bit of support at this end away from the chuck i've changed back to a three-jaw chuck a bit more rigidity i've set a stop on my carriage and i'm going to put a fine diamond nail and it needs to go from that point there where my knurling tool just misses the chuck and i've set the dro to the extremity this way so i'm going to put a diamond knurl on there over that area now as i said earlier it doesn't matter that there are grooves in there at the moment because the first groove will be machined away the second third fourth groove um yeah i believe the fifth groove they will all be come into play but they are they line up exactly with the existing grooves on the dart that's there so they will have to be deepened uh, into various depths as we go along but they do line up. So the fact that we've still got the remnants of the existing grooves isn't a problem. Very lucky that the particular darts that I bought um, 
it worked out nicely. So we're going to put a knurl on here. So I don't know what this is going to be like. It's running nice and true. Let me just check that I've got, yes I have, <laughs> got the fine wheels up. Let will run this a bit slow. Oil can be a good idea, I think. A little bit of oil on it. I don't know what this is going to do like. It's got two chances. Let me just check my three jaw chuck. Yeah, it is tight. And I'm just going to come in gently. I'm going to do all this by hand. Just got the room. There's my wheel spinning. I'm doing about 120 RPM. I think I could probably go faster than that. 200. The position I got the dart in stuck out the chuck is just right. So that my tool, my kneeling tool, the great big thing is just missing my three jaw chuck. I'm against the stop now. Come back to where I should have the start point. There. Just gonna have a look, see what we got. Just the startings of a new. So keep going. Let me just wind it in a bit more. I don't want to put ridiculous pressure on this, so I'm just going point one at a time. Just trace the knurling wheels gently back and forth. Over the surface, that's against my stop. I'm doing the knurl first, because it, it does take a fair bit of load. To put a knurl on, I want, especially when you're using this sort of uh, knurling tool. If I hadn't had the support of this little collet, I think it would be pushing away. I'm just winding it in point one at a time, and then just traversing the knurling tool across the diameter so that the knurl passes beyond either end of where I want the knurl to end up. As I said earlier, that's all going to be machined away. If I prove my process on this one, let's have a look. I think we're about two-thirds of the way there. It's not a very deep knurl on the existing, and I'm trying to replicate it exactly. Really. One more pass on there, maybe push to point three. set a stop on my carriage so that uh, I don't go crashing into the chuck with my knurling tool. One of the uses of a stop, it's uh, quite good when you've got something like that. Let me just have a look. I think just feels a nice sharp knurl on there but just a little more I think. I just run that back and forth a couple of times. I'm going to set a zero there on my DRO so I know how far I pushed in. Because I'll be working on the same diameter with uh, all three darts. So. It's 
same relative position of the cross like against that diameter should give me a uniform null across all three darts. You can actually see the null in there now. I think. I think I'll run the same pass. Just one more pass back and forth. Get rid of the deflection that I'm getting. Not the most exciting thing to watch, Nurling, I'm sorry. I think I'm going to call that done. Okay, let's wind that off. I'll give you a little, uh, little close-up of what we got. So as you can see, I've got a Nurl on the end of there. And it's matching up with the area where I'm going to need it. Just. I think I've just caught the end Nurl. Just about perfect there. <coughs> so I think on the next one, I'll just stick it out a little bit more. But yeah, I've pretty much replicated the same size nil, and you can see the little grooves in there that were left from the previous dart shape. So another two of those to do. So having done the nil on the OD of the darts, over the area where it needs to be, as you can see, the original darts are much, much shorter than the ones I'm going to be making them from. So what I'm looking to do is to drill out the tapping drill for the 2BA in the back end of the darts to the correct depth from the front. So what I've done is put the original one up in the chuck here with the very leading edge of the tungsten dead flush with the front of the jaws and there's a fly flying around, we just had him. and wound in the uh, four mil drill which is a tapping drill for 2BA into the back of the dart until it comes to the stop the or the existing depth and carefully measured from the tailstock to my chuck in this area here and it's bang on 60 mil so all I got to do now is wind out replace the dart with one of the new ones set that up in exactly the same way and now I need to drill it out to exactly the same depth so I know internally the depth of the hole in the original darts and the depth of the, the bottom of the hole is the same depth from the front and that should help keep the wake identical so as it stands at the moment, that's about uh, 43. So it needs to drill about uh, from wherever I am now. Yeah, probably about 17 mil out. So we'll get on with that. When I'm drilling it out, what I found was when I put the new darts up, there must be a slight discrepancy between the point and the barrel. So I just put the uh, My little bearing, my little pusher tool, just touching against it so that it's running true on the end. And then just taking it very easy here. Got about five mil to go. And drilling out with the tapping drill. Could run a little faster, I suppose. Another couple of mil to go. 58. Another half turn of the handle, I think. Just 
and there's my six female. Right, so whip that one out, put another one up. So we've got the tap up in the chuck in the tailstock, having drilled them all out. I'm just holding them by the front of the barrel, which I'm not too worried if it marks it because that's all going to be machined away. I'm just running the first tap in now, there we are, it's just started to spin until it bottoms out. I'm doing this by hand because it's a very small tap, it's tough material, it was a machine alright like, but uh, I thought we'll, uh, we'll just follow the existing thread down through into the deeper tapped hole, down to the bottom. I'm going to have to part these off to length at some stage, well probably the next stage, part this back end off, so maybe I'll put a centre at the back and just part them off. using again the existing dart as a guide against the chuck set my parting tool on the on the back edge you know maybe a thou or so proud and skim them off but yeah that's my second one done now I think which ones have I done that one and that one there's the third one just holding it on the on the diameter, not the point on the front. As I said, just doing it by hand and letting the uh, letting the dart pull the tap and the tailstock forward, catching just a little bit. So let's see where we are at the moment. We've turned the OD and put the knurl in over the area where we're going to want it to replicate the other dart. You can see there actually where those grooves line up to the existence, the two ones. Anyway, they're not deep enough at the moment. We'll have to deepen those later. We've drilled in from the back of the new dart to the same depth as the hole on the existing dart and we've tapped so far down. A lot of material to come off here. We'll part that off at a later date. But I think while I've still got this large diameter here, which is fairly solid, I can hold on that to do the profile on the front of the dart, this large radius. So I think that'll be my next step. So just put an approximate angle on the front there, wound on with the compound slide. And I've just realised that there's a the peak of this is actually a smaller diameter than over the knurl. It's 7.85. So I'm just skimming back to where that first knurl is until I get a diameter of 7.85 and that's 7.95 so another 0.05 aside nope where my end point is going to be of the of the radius but as you can see I'm roughing it out I've got the bottom at diameter I've got the angle slightly higher than the where it's got to be and now we've basically got to dress this radius in so that the two match up so over the bottom part of the slope I'm pretty much there. I could cut a form tool for this, but I'd be worried if I tried to cut all that in one hit that it would shatter quite badly. So I think what I'm going to do is split the difference of the two angles now and take that peak off and try and just replicate what we've got there as I go up. So the angle I was using there was 20 degrees. So I'm going to drop my compound back to 10 degrees Oh, you can't see me in that picture, can you? Anyway, here's 10. I've got my compound back to 10 degrees. And I'm going to take that peak off the top of there. Can you see it? Yeah, you can. Right. So enough chops in. Get on with it. Just find the point where we touch. Here we go. 
a bit more. Just going to reference that against the original. Yeah, it needs more of it. So I'm still well oversized here on, on its finish. So this is a, uh, we call it a roughing out procedure, yeah pretty much, this is going to be a roughing out procedure to get basically two angles in there, that's going to approximate somewhere near where I want to be. I think what I want to do now is have a 15 degrees and split the difference of those two flats so we'll just do that just move the compound again here's making a difference 15 degrees i'm going to come in somewhere around there and take the peak off between those two flats For all intents and purposes, there would be three flats. And by appearances, as I look at that now, it's starting to appear to be a, um, a sort of curved radius on there. I'm just going to offer the original up again and they appear to match okay I think the procedure at this stage I mean we're probably a thou or so of dressing and again I'll use a needle file probably use my new handle and just dress between those two flats maybe a little bit of a divot on the end and a little bit of a run out on this end but I think we will have appro approximated the identical radius as near as it happens on the one to the other. I don't know whether that shows there. Difficult to tell when you've got a slightly different colour in there, but yeah, we will have what we need. Off camera, I've just taken the three darts and I've got a little um, V tool with the normal carbide tips in, not the ones for aluminium which I've been using which has exactly the same radius as the root of these grooves in the existing dart. The distance from the very front was 10.2 mil to the first groove. So I've taken all three darts and put the first groove in at 10.2. Now there are a series of six grooves and the overall distance from the first one to the last one is uh, 11 mil. So I've got one, two, three, four, five steps being 11 mil. So the groove distance is 2.2 mil between each groove. So what I've done, I'll just bring you around. I've got the next start set up. I've just dropped the V tool into the first groove, set my zeros on my DRO. So I'm going to step over 2.2 mil at a time and put the series of grooves in the dart. So I'll just show you. So there's the first one. That should just touch off on the zero. There. Move along 2.2. I think I'll lock the carriage for this. It could pull one way or the other. Get the right end of the spanner helps. Here we are. There's a 
first one. 4.4 now. There. That's it. 6.6. .6. There. That's it. Eight point eight. That's it. And the last groove at eleven mil. There we go. And that is a set of grooves replicated to the originals. They look slightly different because they're not, you know, they shine up in a different way because it's just been cut and what have you. But that is an exact match for the pattern of the originals. And again, like you can see here, I've got my little support on the end because I'm stuck out a fair way from the chuck. But I tell you what, the grip on there is really quite uh, quite good. So my final step, I'm going to do this to all of them now. And my final step will be to cut the taper on the back end of these. So we'll have a rethink on that one. So what's the story so far? We've got everything shaped on the barrel up until the last groove. We've got them drilled out all to the same depth as the original. So the drilled hole in the end of these will be to the same depth as the original hole. And I've tapped them so far down with the 2BA tap. They'll have to be finished off when I've cut them off. And I'll finish them off with a bottom in tap. I think that's probably it for this episode. Um, so there'll be a part two coming soon. Which I'll be parting off what's left and turning the taper on the back. I may have to have a little... Um, 2BA stub arbor. I might see if I can find a uh, like an aluminium dart shaft or something like that that I can hold on just to screw them on. I mean it's only a tickle to finish off this size um, so we'll see what we can do on that one. I haven't got a 2BA die otherwise I'd uh, I'd make up a little um, mandrel for the chuck turned in situ that would screw on but I've only got 2BA taps I haven't got a die. Um, so yeah, I have got a dart shaft, an aluminium one, which, you know, they're pretty tough, although they're anodized, which I could hold up, may, might have to clock it up in the forger or what have you to get it uh, perfect, but not a problem. So that the next setup will be part them off to length, turn the tapers, and then finish off tapping, and I think that'll be it. So that's all to come in part two.